Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. Wanted to record this quick video to number one, congratulate the Power BI team on adding this awesome killer feature to the product, anomaly detection. Number two, I stress test the feature a little bit, see how it works and see how we might use this in our reports. Before I jump into anomaly detection, let me frame up the data set that I'm using for this video. It's a little bit morbid. I've downloaded two year worth of uh, US uh, deaths by week and by state. So in this data set, we have uh, for every week cause of the death and also the state specified. So let's take a look at what the model looks like. So if I go into the model view, we see my fact table and then we have cause table that specifies all of the reasons for the deaths. We have state and then we have our date. Then as usually I have a metrics table so that all of my measures are neatly organized in a single table. So let's talk a little bit about what anomaly detection is. So there are several approaches to this problem. Number one is uh, we're looking at time series data. So we're looking at a metric changing over time. So here we're looking at all US deaths uh, for the last uh, year and almost two years. And um, there's a couple of things that we could do. Number one is we know that time series data has some sort of seasonality. So that would be uh, one um, approach to understand what the uh, whether we have an anomaly. So here we see a big spike. This is where the coronavirus hit. So obviously this is going to be not um, in line with seasonality that was observed uh, in the prior months. So something like this definitely would be an anomaly. What else would be an anomaly? Well, what else would be an anomaly is distribution of data with respect to reasons or with states. So for example, if um, we have heart attacks and all of a sudden heart attacks doubles or triples, then that would be an anomaly in distribution of the data for that data point. I would like to know about it. So obviously we'd want to see something like this here. And also if something happens in a state, right? So if all of a sudden diabetes uh, kills a lot of people in Texas, then that would be uh, an anomaly that I would like to uh, find out. So the more complicated the model is, the more dimensions I have, the more permutations of things that could cause an anomaly are, and it makes more and more, uh, that kind of complications make it harder and harder to figure out what might be uh, causing the anomaly. So how can we discover anomalies in our data set? Well, sometimes we could just look at the, uh, at the line and see uh, if we have uh, um, uh, data going up or down uh, precipitously, and that would tell us, okay, something is wrong. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Another way to do this is to uh, use a different chart. So for example, here we have a ribbon chart. And then now if I break this ribbon chart by cause and take a look at our reasons, we see that every now uh, and then causes of deaths uh, flip, right? So every time we see a flip like this, that could be uh, a result of an anomaly. So here is the pink uh, area in chart here. This is where the coronavirus came in. So every time we see things flip, so if you see our bands flip or bands shrink or grow all of a sudden, that would be an indication that something interesting is going on and we would like to uh, drill into it some more. Sometimes you could just use a line chart again. So uh, if you don't have too many data points, so again here I could see that coronavirus COVID-19 is spiking up. So that would be an anomaly. But if I pull in uh, states instead of uh, reason, you will see that this graph will become really uh, busy and it will be very difficult for me to figure out uh, if there's anything, um, any kind of anomalies are happening with distribution of my data. So take a look at this graph. So here I've, I'm plotting all of the states. Okay, so here I assume this is New York, uh, New York City. So uh, we see that uh, things are spiking up. So um, uh, sometimes we, we can, but uh, the more data points we add to a line graph like this, the harder it's going to become for us to, to figure out where the uh, interesting uh, anomalies occur. You know what, I don't know why CDC decided to report New York City as a separate state. I went ahead and fixed that data, so now we have a single line for New York. Here you go. And we could see that there was a huge spike in New York relative to everything else going on. But my point is still valid. The more data points you have, the more complexity you have in the chart, the harder it is to figure out what's going on. So if we want to make it easier for our users to figure out what's uh, which data point and which week here uh, was interesting, um, although interesting, I say double quotes, we're talking about uh, deaths trends of, after all. But um, uh, let's uh, let's see if we can use anomaly detection to, to see if um, we can figure out 
um, what happened with the US deaths uh, in the last two years and if see if that feature uh, will be good enough to uh, to help us analyze this data. The first thing that you need to know about anomaly detection is by default uh, it's not going to be available. You have to go to file options and then add it as a, as a new feature, preview feature. And then um, when you have a chart, there's another requirement. That chart only works if you put time series or time or date in your axis. So if you put anything else in your axis, then um, that feature anomaly detection will not work. So as long as you have that here, which you, as you see, I do, by the way, I love the zoom um, what are these things called? Zoom axis, zoom sliders. These things are awesome. That's uh, another game changer. But uh, let's talk about anomaly detection. So if I go to analytics, you see find anomalies here at the bottom. Click here, say add. Now what you see right away is uh, the default sensitivity is 70 and it added this uh, interval to our blue line. So that's kind of a, a interval of acceptable, I guess, range. Uh, and uh, but right now, as you're looking at it, uh, nothing's changed other than this interval. So what we want to do is we want to crank up the sensitivity. Honestly, I think um, I need to play a lot more with this, but I would go with 100% first pretty much every single time and then start dialing it down, down from there. So once I've um, specified 100% in sensitivity, you see a bunch of these data points uh, showed up here. Let me go ahead and change this color to let's say bright red. And um, now I see that we have almost uh, 100 different weeks of data in our line, but uh, according to this feature, there's only a handful of pieces of data that are interesting. So uh, how do we know uh, what's interesting about this data point? All you need to do is click on it. So once you click on it, uh, what you will see is at the top, you will see the same uh, chart that we're looking at. So that makes sense. If I have a lot of different things going on in this dashboard, that just makes it easier for me to work with. At the bottom, it says what the reason for this anomaly is. It says that um, deaths were unexpectedly high on that day. Um, and the reason, potential reason that drives it is diseases of the heart. So. Um, of all of the data points, it looks at distribution of all of the data points and it's diseases of the heart, which is this uh, purple line here, um, is that uh, that spiked up around this time. Uh, what is this? So, and that's, so let's take a look. So 1019, 1019. So you see this thing spiked up a little bit more than probably everything else. And so this thing picked it up, but it assigned a score of 6%. So. Uh, it's not particularly strong reason. So let's keep exploring. The next data point is here on 321. And now we have another spike in diseases of the heart. Now it's much stronger, 44%. So if I click on 321, then we see 320, you know, the diseases of the heart really spiked up there. That's this dark purple line. Then we're going to the next data point. And now we, we see that our distribution of data has changed. And um, the the reason of of um, of issues was now COVID, right? So we we see COVID is uh, becoming a um, uh, starting to grow, and so it's picking it up. Let's go next again. So now what's happening is, so COVID is eighty seven percent. So COVID is taking a big chunk of distribution of deaths on. Um, what is it, 4-4 in April, and we see that state of New York is driving it. So we already looked at the data before and we saw this huge spike in New York. So it's really impressive how, um, how uh, anomaly detection found out both COVID and New York uh, were the reasons of a big anomaly. Let's look at the next one. So the next one is, again, um, COVID is still driving a lot of um, reasons for death. Uh, and now we're seeing other states are growing. So we're seeing big uh, changes in distribution in Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Jersey. This is all consistent with the history. That's why I use this data set. We all have watched this happen live. So it's pretty impressive how the tool is now capturing all of those insights and surfacing those insights to us. So now let's, let's take a look at the last two data points. So if I click on the data point as of uh, 919, September 19th, it just says that it was too low and possible explanation, we couldn't find a significant explanation for this anomaly. 
So uh, I'm guessing that the reason for this anomaly is that uh, coming from seasonality or some sort of time series analysis. So it was not following uh, the overall trend and therefore it got flagged. Now we could play with the sensitivity here and make maybe get 95%, which will then make some of these data points go away. So that tells us kind of the confidence with which the tool is detecting it. Frankly, having played with this quite a bit, I would almost um, be uh, preferring to have this tool to be too sensitive. So I would start out with 100% and then start dialing them down because uh, you know I'm really impressed with how well this tool predicts or uh, detects where the anomaly occurs. That's about it for today. I will be making this data set available for everybody to play with. I will be adding a lot more features and uh, I'll be using it in some other tutorials. Uh, this data set is directly linked to the CDC so you can always uh, hit refresh and this will pull in all this information if you want to do additional analysis on your own. Again, big kudos uh, to the Power BI team. This feature is awesome. Uh, definitely a home run and might be one of my, if not the most popular feature uh, added to Power BI this year. Wanted to thank you guys for stopping by and look forward to seeing you come back soon. Bye.